Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of All. In this video we're going to have a look at how you can steal geometry from objects in Blender. So let's quickly talk about what I mean by stealing geometry and how you can do this in native Blender. Then we'll go through some other methods you can use which are undeniably quicker, some which are free but some of which have a cost to them. So what I'm going to do is select these faces here and I want to take this out of this object so I can use it somewhere else. And what we do in native Blender is press Shift and D to duplicate it then you can press escape to leave it where it is, key, and separate by selection, and that means that now we've got one object here, and we've got another object here, which we'll typically use for things like booleaning or adding more details. For example, I could come to my modifiers panel and add a solidify modifier, and that means I can now create some additional geometry, but this is a separate object, which I could then either boolean to this object or maybe even just move it around. So it is simple enough to do with native Blender, and there's no issue with doing it that way, but there are quicker ways to do it that are more efficient. So let's start going through those. And I'm going to start with an add-on that is free. And it's one of my favourite add-ons. If you've watched the channel, it is Machine Tools. So once you install Machine Tools, as I said, it is free. You can get it from Gumroad. There's a link in the description. If you go to Machine Tools and have a look at your settings, you need to make sure for this to work that you've got the Smart Face Creation method on. Make sure you save your preferences and then close that. And from this point, any face that you select or group of faces you select, so say for example, I select these, all you need to do is hit four, and now you've got this as a separate object. Now what's useful about this is it's already gone into edit mode for the object that you wanted to create. So you can do things like Alt and E and then extrude long normals if you want to do that. So that's machine tools and it is free to use. Now coming to our paid add-ons, there are some other options as well. And the other one that I really like to use is hard ops. Now what hard ops is gonna do, if I go to face mode, is give a lot more options with this so you can do a lot more things with it. So the first thing I can do with this selected is press Q and you'll notice that we've got this curve extract. In actual fact, this is very rarely, or I very rarely use this to extract curves from an object that can be used for that. You have a lot of other options as well. So for example, if I press my left mouse button while holding down control, it is going to create that second object. You'll notice that this one is now in object mode. Just to be slightly more efficient on clicking, if I want something in object mode and I'm going to then add a modifier, I'll typically use this. Or if I want something in edit mode, then I'll typically use the machine tools version. But there is much more to hard ops and what it can do. So for example, if I just select these ones here and press Q, and this Curve Extract tool gives us some more options. We can hold down Shift instead of Control, and that will create a new object, but it is automatically adding a Solidify modifier, and you can drag your mouse forwards or backwards to change the thickness of this modifier. So again, if you're interested in creating a Solidify modifier, that is going to be the fastest way of doing it. Now, a lot of the times, the reason we're creating a Solidify modifier, if I just come to this one, and change it to there, is that we then want to just scale that out slightly, booting this from an object, for example, like that. And we want to do this non-destructively. We could have just done that in the object itself because then we can move this around or change how we want this to look. So for example, I could change this thickness without having to go into the geometry, or I could even come here and just delete the Boolean altogether. Now, once again, in hard ops, we can do that even faster. Instead of using, let's go to this face instead, instead of going to Curve Extract, we can go to Mesh Tools and then Selection to Boolean, or being sensible, it's also in the Boolean tool, so Selection to Boolean. Now what this does is automatically effectively applies like an inset function where you can move backwards and forwards to change the size of this. Again, very, very helpful because that's a pretty common function to want to do. And then as soon as you click, you are now creating a boolean. So I can now push that in. So let's say there and click and you've done your boolean. And once again, this has got a solidify modifier. So effectively it's what we were doing over there, but it now saves you clicks because you don't need to add the boolean in. If we just come here and delete that and delete that, the other option with this, in case you don't want to have a difference boolean, let's go to face mode, is we can do exactly the same thing again and selection to boolean click and then click, but we can press A and this will now create a union boolean. So we've now got this added to the end, which again is really useful if you want to have this as a separate object. So later on, you can say, for example, scale it on everything but the Y because you want to change the size of this. Or you could even 
G and then Shift Y to be able to move this around. So very effective. And what I really like about this, if I just bring in a cube, is this generally works really well and will work on multiple faces at the same time. So for example, if I select multiple faces instead of just the one at the end, Q, Boolean, and then selection to Boolean, I can make this smaller, click, and then I can inset this in to somewhere around, let's say, there. Let's just hide that. And again, this is a Boolean, so we can always, using hard ops, Q, and then ever scroll to select this, and then we can change the thickness of this. Now there is one final one with hard ops that I want to mention, which is really nice, and that is that at the moment, well, if I go into edit mode, there is nothing that can be selected other than these outer faces, which generally is fine. But what if I want to do something on these faces here? Well, normally I'd have to come into the modifier stack and apply this to then go into face mode and be able to select some of these faces. But what if I want to keep this non-destructive workflow so I can come in and still be able to change things if I want to? Well, in hard ops, you can do that as well. You can literally select things that you shouldn't be able to select and then extract them in a similar way. So if I come to this object, Q, and this time I'm gonna to go to Mesh Tools and then Face Extract, what this will allow me to do is select some faces that don't even really exist because they're part of the Boolean, and then in exactly the same fashion, in fact, actually, let's just unselect those and select maybe those and those, and then I can press Space. That will allow me to shrink those in or not if I don't want to, and again, then click and add that Solidify in and then click again and then we've got that done. Even though this geometry that we've been selecting doesn't even really exist. Really, really cool from HardOps. Now HardOps is a paid for add-on. There is a link in the description if you're interested in getting it. If you are gonna get it, I would get it with Box Cutter because it has loads of additional features that work together. And that is an affiliate link, so while it doesn't cost you any extra, it does help the channel out. Now there is one other method that I want to mention, which is part of Native Blender, but it requires a little bit more setup, but once it's done, it's really quick to use. And that is if I just, let's say, apply all of these and want to take something from this, what you can do is say Shift and D to duplicate it. I mean, you could do this with the old version, but I want to keep that. And then you go into face mode and select the faces you want. So let's say those faces there. And then you can set up a geometry node tool, which I've set up here to delete all of the other geometry. So you can end up with a copy. Now what that means you can do is, if we come to, let's say this object here, is Shift and D to duplicate it, escape, go into face mode and select just that face, and then Geo Tools and delete all the other geometry, and then I can S this as I choose to. So I guess you can call that native to Blender. Now I'm not gonna go through that whole geometry node setup here because it would make the video artificially long, and it's not really a tool, it's something you've got to make yourself, but there is a link in the description if you do wanna check that out. So you can see a video on that. I thought geometry nodes are a bit different to what I've covered, so I thought some people wouldn't be interested in that. And then for those that are, you can check out that video. So there we go, a range of different ways of stealing geometry from objects for use in your Blender projects. As always, if you found that video useful, please do hit the like button. It helps share the video around so other people will know these different tools and strategies. If you're not subscribed, subscribe for more videos. And if you want to support the channel further, there is a Patreon page where for a few dollars a month, you get these videos ad free a week early and you get other cool perks as well. Have a great day, guys.